Now it's time for The Last Word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Good evening, Lawrence. Good evening, Rachel. Good evening, Good evening Rachel. And we're going to continue the hurricane coverage, uh, but also fit in the dramatic news about Paul Manafort possibly reaching a plea bargain deal, which we may or may not discover is tomorrow's news. Yeah. And then that uh, kind of stunning, uh, hard to describe news about Brett Kavanaugh and about his nomination. Uh, and Rachel, I can tell you that I actually uh, was informed about this letter on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I have been aware of it since then. I have also been aware of the constraints on it that indicated it might not become public because the uh, author of the letter did not want to be identified and did not want to come forward. And so as of Friday, uh, both uh, Congresswoman and Senator Feinstein had a situation in which uh, the person who'd given them information was someone who did not want to be publicly identified, mm. at which put her in the identical posture of where Anita Hill began yeah. with the Senate Judiciary Committee. She believed she had information, Anita Hill did, about Clarence Thomas that the committee might want to know, but she did not want to come forward publicly. That presented a challenge for the committee because they were faced with the question of, as Joe Biden described it at the time, uh, could we take secret information in effect about a nominee and not, and, and would the nominee never get a chance to confront the accuser in effect by cross testifying as they ultimately ended up doing. The committee has this challenge again tonight. That um, question of what do we do uh, with someone who has something that is negative information about a nominee, but that person doesn't want to be uh, doesn't want to come forward publicly. Lawrence, you said that you knew about this letter as of Friday. Fr did Friday you, afternoon. And did you yeah. know? Do you know about the content of the letter? About I know what more, the allegations are. I know are? more about the content than has been publicly revealed. But it was it it, it was in a. It's all been in this kind of box. Uh, I, I would say that I, I don't have that much more. The indication uh, that I have on it is that it occurred when uh, both Brett Kavanaugh and the complainant were minors. Uh, yeah. That's consistent with some of the reporting that's out there tonight saying that they were in high school or it occurred when he was in high school. Uh, but there, there, I do have an indication that there was uh, specifics in, in this letter. Uh, the, the, you, there's a, you'll notice in tonight's reporting there's a little bit of, of a conflict going on in the, in the public reporting about how specific uh, was this letter. And, so, uh, and also that the people who were staring at this letter, some of the important people staring at this letter, found it to be credible. They hmm. found it to be something that they simply uh, had to deal with. And so I can completely understand the legal kind of box that Dianne Feinstein found herself in with uh, someone who does not want to come forward, but she's staring at a letter that involves a possible violation of law uh, and and what does she do with that? And so Gosh. this is where we are. The FBI has it now. Now, what's described in that letter does not fall within the criminal investigative jurisdiction of the FBI. It's not a federal crime. Uh, it would be state law involved. Mm -hmm. uh, but but their relevance to this obviously is in the background uh, checking arena, which is where they are and and where they are with it right now. And the question of whether the FBI might take this, might treat this seriously enough, depending on what the allegation is, that they would go to local state law enforcement authorities to try to pursue this. That, of course, would depend on the seriousness of the allegation, how credible the FBI found it was, and, of course, statute of limitations, depending on what the alleged behavior was. And then that, of course, would become a matter for local or state law enforcement, wherever the alleged infraction happened or wherever jurisdiction would go. And then there's this factor in terms of Dianne Feinstein, this dilemma that you're describing. I mean, some of what's been reported tonight is that in the New York Times is that it was other Democratic senators who told Senator Feinstein, if this letter contains what you say it does, this is a matter for the FBI. I mean, the other senators she would have been talking with, other Democratic senators on the Judiciary Committee, include a lot of former prosecutors. So if that was their advice to her, uh, I mean, it's... 
it, this is this is a this is a mess, and the idea that the nomination, the vote, is just, just going to go through while all this remains unsettled is very hard to imagine. Well, this is one thing that the delay is about, and and that's why, as we've talked about it before, every day of delay in this particular instance matters because the shape of this story could be dramatically different tomorrow. I mm -hmm. mean, there was, uh, you know, there was a day in her life when Anita Hill firmly believed that what she had to say about Clarence Thomas was never going to become public, and the next day it was and so and she didn't know when that was going to happen and so sometimes these things the d the dynamics of this kind of story can change and and it is now in effect in terms of what could be the next public stage all up to the potential accuser here as to whether or not or not uh, she wants to engage in this publicly now the FBI absolutely has a mandate to try to speak to this complainant. They hmm. absolutely, and, and it isn't necessarily as a matter of a criminal investigation, but they are still on the background investigation of a Supreme Court nominee. They have information that they need to know. I am sure that the FBI will make an effort to contact and speak to this person, but this person is under no obligation to speak to the FBI. Yeah, Frank Lutzi was just saying there, just on our air, that when he was part of doing background investigations into potential nominees that was the sort of thing that would have to happen and in case derogatory information came up you have to talk to the complainant you have to see if that person has you know has exists in FBI files for some other reason you have to assess the seriousness of it and now this letter having been held by Anna Eshoo and by Senator Feinstein and gone through this kind of very difficult process that you're describing. We now know that that letter has gone to the FBI. It's gone from the FBI to the White House. We also know it's gone to Senator Grassley and presumably to his staff on the Republican side of the Judiciary Committee. So this is now, this is now moving. Um, and if the FBI needs to speak with the complainant too, this is a process that's going to got to plod forward in some way or another. And Rachel, I have to tell you that when I came upon this information on Friday and stared at it and discussed it and, and talked it through uh, with the source telling me about it, I, I had the expectation at that point that this would not become public, that this was a box that no one was going to be able to penetrate because of the complainant's desire uh, to remain uh, not known publicly and to not be revealed publicly and that was the lock that was holding this information and so uh, the fact that the senator and uh, congresswoman issue issued statements about it today and took this step senator feinstein took the step to the fbi was what is where we are now and we do not know where we're going to be tomorrow no this is i mean we, we, we overuse the word unprecedented, mm -hmm. but for Supreme Court nominations, even with the Clarence Thomas background, uh, this is absolutely unprecedented. It really is. Remarkable. Thanks, my friend. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Lawrence. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.